Hello and welcome everyone. Today I want to show you another build of mine. Um, this is going to be a well, a little bit of an older build that I did like a couple of months ago. This is my Fire Ravenous Earth Oppressor. As you can see it's focused around the Blight Lord set. We have a 4 piece Blight Lord set and also some other items which I'm going to talk about later. As always, let's start off with the skill allocation. So we have the Necromancer and the Oathkeeper here, and these are two masteries that combined make the Oppressor class. Um, obviously, since Ravenous Earth is like our main damage ability, <coughs> we have this maxed out at hard cap, 26 out of 16. Um, put this to 18 out of 12 and this to 18 out of 12 as well. That's as high as we can push it while using the items that we need to use. Um, so I absolutely... You, abs you absolutely have to max out this one, and you also have to max out this one. These are like super important. Um, Fall Eruption though is not as important, and you can actually like put this down to a one pointer only if you feel like it. It's not that important. You could like put seven or like eleven points somewhere else if you feel like you can make more use out of them somewhere else. But it's fine like this as well. Like it's not bad. Then obviously we have Spectral Binding, which is like a must-have for any Necromancer ever. Like you always get this for the HP and the offensive ability. We don't use the Aether damage here, but that's not too big of uh, like not too big of a deal because the HP and the off offensive ability that you get from this is actually insane. Like 1.6k HP for free. That's super amazing. And um, this is just a one-pointer because we have like so many bonuses to. Necromancer and Spectral Wrath in general. We don't really need this. Um, this like has reduction, resistance reduction for damage types we don't really use because we're converting all of our vitality to fire and also like acid poison to fire as well. So I mean at least the f vitality damage on this uh, proc will actually deal fi fire damage even though it doesn't say it like that in the tooltip. It will actually deal fire damage not vitality damage. And then also we have Mark of Torment, which is like a must-have for any Necromancer as well. Just 6 out of 10, the usual like value um, synergy here. So yeah, this gives us 46% damage absorption for 4.6 seconds. And then we are also using Siphon Souls, which also gets converted to Fire. This is like a heal and a debuff at the same time. Also the Vitality DK here is actually burn damage, this will get converted as well. And yeah, this would be, for example, a skill where you could put more points in when taking points out of Fall Eruption. Taking out points from Fall Eruption and putting them into Siphon Souls would actually be legit, and uh, it wouldn't be too bad, too bad actually. Because this only like procs when an enemy dies, right? It's kind of fine in places like Crucible, where you have like so many mobs around you all the time. But against like single bosses, this doesn't really do anything, right? So. Feel free to change this around a little bit if you want to. Um, also, like we do have some resistance reduction modifiers to Siphon Souls, so this actually is also a resistance reduction skill for us, so we have to absolutely use this to also reduce enemy fire resistance. Now onto the Oathkeeper. We have like one pointers and wires, right? Like one, one, one here. I'm putting one here as well into Volcanic Stride because we're actually scaling fire damage. Whenever I'm playing an Oathkeeper that is not scaling this fire damage, I'm leaving this one out and just take one point here for mobility and then one point here to increase the range of the mobility skill by 3 meters and to reduce its cooldown by like a small amount depending on how high you have this with like plus skills. Then there's uh, obviously Presence of Virtue and like the Haven and the Rebuke. These are skills that you should always use as an Oathkeeper like a must-have passive. You should always have this soft capped. You can have this at either 3 out of 10, 5 out of 10, or just put as many points as you like in here. Actually, I would probably... I should probably put this down to 5 out of 10, to be honest. And like, put the other 4 points into like Siphon Souls and Blood Boil. And then Rebuke is just a 1 pointer. Well, I mean, it doesn't really do that much for this build, but it does reduce like the damage that you have that you get reflected. So it 
helps a little bit against like reflect mobs that reflect your fire and burn damage. Um, resilience is also a like circuit breaker every Oathkeeper should use. You can use this either at 5 out of 12, 11 out of 12, or 14 out of 12. So 5 out of 12 gives you like plus 4% max aura's. 10 out of 12 gives you plus 5% max aura's. But also like 11 out of 12 gives you like plus 1% DA and physics on top. So if you go like for 10 out of 12, you kind of want to go for 11 out of 12 as well. So you that's why this... Is usually seen at either 5 or 11 out of 12 actually, not like blast sheet, which is like at 5, 10 and 14. This is not 5, 10 and 14, this is 5, 11 or 14 usually. And 14 out of 12 gives you like plus 6% max RS. Um, this got slightly nerfed though, so I could actually also push this down to 11 as well. But I think this is actually fine for now because... I don't know, like, maybe I can put so many points here that I can also, like, pull out three points here. If that's the case, maybe I would do that, but... Uh, yeah, let's see. This is still, like, very good. Uh, Ascension, you hard cap this, like, you want to have this as high as possible to get the flat absorption. Like, flat absorption is one of the best defensive skills, or, like, defensive stats in the game. So make sure to have as much as possible of those. Uh, and also like the per percent all damage is also not bad, obviously. Re retaliation damage, we don't really care about that too much, but yeah. It's like, it's there, but we don't use this. And then Clarity of Purpose, <laughs> this is uh, an insane damage boost as well, also has like insane CC resistances on it. And it gives you like 15% offensive ability during the time ascension that ascension is up. This is a nice offensive boost during ascension. And uh, you do soft cap this, like soft cap gives you 15% OA, and like hard capping this doesn't really do anything because neither do you get more offensive ability. Like you get like one plus one offensive ability for I think three points or something like that. So that's like way too high of an investment to even think about using this above 12 out of 12. And then like the CC resistances are gonna increase by one percent, which is basically nothing. So yeah, you have this at. 12 out of 12. Now the second or like third main ability, like I would say Ravenous Earth is the first main ability and then you have Siphon Souls and the Guardians as well. Um, these are actually hard capped at 26 out of 16 as well because of the Blight Lord set. The Blight Lord set also gives you plus one summon limit, so this build actually has three Guardians instead of only two. They do help uh, quite a lot with damage. And then obviously the Celestial Presence reduces enemy resistances by 44% for physical fire and bleeding. And we only care about the fire here, obviously. Um, so yeah, this is a must-have and a must heart max on this build because of Blood Lord set. And uh, then we have Divine Mandate here. This is basically the only exclusive that is kind of useful for this build because this is the only one that also gives us per, like percent fire damage. Also slow resistance is not bad. Also crit damage is very good. So yeah, it's very good overall. We cannot use this because this will convert fire to acid, right? And then we don't really care about this. This gives us casting attack speed. We don't really need that that badly. And then Master of Death gives us OA and DA. Like if we had very terrible OA and DA, I would consider going for Master of Death instead. But I think the crit damage here is just so good, and like OA and DA is actually fine. Anyways, let's also check out the devotions. So for devotions, for any fire devotion, you want to have Eldritch Fire Red. Right? This is the must-have for every fire devotion, um, because of the fire resistance reduction for like any fire build, I mean. And then we have also the Magi. I like this very much for, especially for fire casters. Uh, this is awesome, and like Ravenous Earth procs this like crazy. So you actually have like volcanoes procking other volcanoes, procking other volcanoes, right? So you have like so many volcanoes on this world. Um, then I'm also using the torch as a tier 3 devotion. The proc is not that, I mean, the proc is fine, it's not terrible, it's not great either. But the nodes of Uzin's torch, like this one, 5% OA, 10% crit. These are actually insane, and also this gives you, like, obviously more burn and fire damage. Um, other than that, I'm using the Viper for, like, percent reduction to enemy res elemental resistances. 
Um, this actually only works with weapon damage, so it only works with my metal, like with my rune and wire smite. Um, that said, this type of resistance reduction is not that important, but the viper itself like, is a pretty good tier 1 devotion, and also we need the blue and the red anyway, so it's pretty nice to have, in my opinion. Mm. Then also, since this is hardcore, um, and we kinda can go for 10 blues, I also go for the Watcher here. The Watcher is just an insane tier 2 defensive ability, or like de defensive devotion, I mean. This is like the best defensive devotion out of all of them, in my opinion, especially for the offensive ability. Um, because it's only a tier 2 and not a tier 3, and has like insane stats for tier 2. Then also we're using Eel to like be able to get Watcher, or like also movement speed, pierce, resistance, and some DA. Um, obviously we want to use Elemental Storm on top of the resistance reduction that this spell over here, the Fall Eruption, grants us, because this will only apply if an enemy dies, right? So whenever we fight like an enemy that doesn't just die, um, we kind of have to use Elemental Storm as well. That's why I'm using Elemental Storm on top, just to like apply resistance reduction consistently, even when there are like no adds around that explode and reduce the target, like the resistances of a target. So yeah, that's just like, and also like the proc is not bad. It deals some decent like elemental damage, burn damage. Um, the stats on the nodes are not that terrible either. It's it's a fine devotion. Um, yeah. Also, this um, goes very well together with Chariot. They have kind of the same affinity requirements, right? Um, <clears throat> Chariot got like a little bit buffed in the last patch, right? This one got stun reduction. Um, now on top, and <clears throat> Chariot of all just gives you like a heal, a small heal, the A proc, the armor proc, and like a bunch of offensive ability over here. So it's, in my opinion, it's like a, it's a solid tier two. It's not anything super crazy, but it's very solid. And also the chariot kind of meshes well with the behemoth as well, because we need like the green and red as well because of the torch. So I'm also going for the behemoth here. Um, reason for that is, well, the build doesn't really have that much lifesteal or like healing outside of siphon souls. So you kind of want to have like another healing source. And also you have resilience, which is kind of the same as Blast Shield when it comes to like its synergies with Giant's Blood so yeah putting this to Resilience to make it only proc when Resilience is up and Resilience will only proc like if you go low will make this only like proc when you need it so that's pretty good um, feel free to use Bat instead of Behemoth though, like Bat is probably just as good, maybe even better actually, because you convert the Vitality to Fire here on top. Um, so yeah, thinking more closely about this, maybe I should do like some small changes, like maybe I should put more points into Siphon Souls, right, and swap around Behemoth for Bat actually. Um, yeah, the quill here is just to like gain affinities for green and purple. Or like the crown, the chariot, and the torch. And then we have like one point left which we can put into the throne. This is a very nice value point, like one point only for 15% stun reduction. That's pretty nice to have. Alright, that would be it for devotions. But yeah, keep in mind that you can take that instead of behemoth at any time. And it's probably even better now actually. Um, you could also try to go for Kovac, like Kovac would be a nice option as well. Kovac is a nice overall devotion and has needs like 10 green, 18 blues, so you'd only, you don't need more greens, right, you just need more blues. And uh, you can probably go for Kovac if you sacrifice the purple affinity, so you would have to like sacrifice Chariot and the Element Storm. And then you would probably be able to go over to Kovac and make that happen. And yeah, I mean, as long as you, you're not fighting a single boss, you are actually fine with not using Elemental Storm. Because of Fall Eruption here. Alright. So let's talk about the gear. Now, this is where things start to become a little bit more 
maybe confusing at first, but also way more interesting. So, okay, there's one obvious thing, right? We use four-piece Blight Lord set, so those are shoulders, uh, hood, dagger, and uh, amulet, right? So these slots are fixed. Now, if you take a closer look at the Blight Lord set, Blight Lord set actually only reduces, or like only converts acid to fire to Ravenous Earth, right? Because this is a fire slash vitality set, it doesn't convert the vitality to fire. So how do we convert the vitality to fire, which is like the major part of Ravenous Earth, actually? Um, so we're using Blaze Heart here. This converts fire to like vitality to fire and chaos to fire. There's no like offhand that we could use here, which I kind of would prefer to use actually over this, but um, no, nope, there's no offhand that can do the same job as this weapon. So because of this, we have to use the Mythical Kovax brand to enable dual wielding for this character. Also, this has like fire bonuses, so it's not that bad to use. It's fine. The meta is pretty good overall, so it's pretty good to use here as well. And I mean, on top of the conversion, this gives us plus one Necro, plus one Oathkeeper, Duration to Siphon Souls, Wit to Fire to Siphon Souls, Fire Resistance to Siphon Souls. So yeah, this is an awesome weapon for this kind of build. It's actually insane. And also the change to make this a dagger is, like, now it's even better than before. Like, now I can actually pull points from Cunning on this build, right? Because before this was a sword, so you had to pull put more points into Cunning. And I can actually now pull these points from Cunning and put them into, like, Physique or Spirit or wherever I want. Like, probably Physique instead. So yeah, this is a great change as well. This is a dagger now. But yeah, this is only 50% global conversion, right? So how do we get like the rest of the vitality to fire converted? Um, we have ring slots free, right? And ring slots free means we can use blaze seer signals. Also, blaze seer signals give us like plus two to guardian of Empyrean. So this helps us hard cap guardians of Empyrean at the same time as giving us around 50% vitality to fire conversion as well. So in this case, like depending on the rolls you get, right, this is like 49% plus 53, this is over 100%, so it's basically 100%. So all of our vitality damage will get converted to fire globally, so it's not only Ravenous Earth's damage, but it's also like out of all of my procs. That's where Bad Devotion would be insane, actually. Um, basically everything, right, so. That's why Ravenous Earth is pure fire on this world. Then... For gloves, we want to enhance our Ravenous Earth even more, right? And there are these Viper Fang grips. They are like the only ones that give you like bonus to a Ravenous Earth. They have, they give acid damage, flat acid damage to Ravenous Earth. But thinking about this build more, the next item would be the Chest Guard of Justice that I would talk about. And I was initially using this to reduce the cunning requirement for Blaze Heart. On top of this, giving like a insane amount of DA actually. Um, but now I could actually pull points from Cunning, put them into Physique, then my DA would be better because of that. And then I maybe don't even need this anymore. So, yeah, feel free to use something else here. I actually have to check like which item I would use here instead of this. Like, I don't really know yet. Um, that's uh, this works well for this, for now. Um, it works great, actually, but... You can change this around, like, you, there's probably a better item for this slot now, because you don't need the cunning reduction anymore. Um, then the belt. This belt is awesome, this is, like, tailored for this belt. This has a plus one Oathkeeper, plus two Ravenous Earth, and, like, burn damage, fire damage, burn duration, also acid to fire conversion, which we actually don't need, that's, like, whatever, we don't need that. And, like, OA, resistances, HP. But yeah, this is just solid for like the skills and the fire damage. Yeah, good belt. Um, then we're using the Serenity Relic. You can probably use other relics here as well. But Serenity giving like plus one all skills and also like Aether and Chaos Resistance and HP is just very solid overall. Like it's very great. And um, yeah, if you have this blueprint, you can always go for it if you don't know what else to take. But there are probably like, some other fire fire oriented uh, relics that are pretty good. Some that either give like plus one, 
I mean, there's probably none that gives you plus one necromancer and also has fire damage, but maybe one for Oathkeeper. Um, I'm not sure how many points you would lose a necromancer and if you could actually hard cap Ravenous Earth without this. Probably actually not, so maybe you need this because of the plus one all skills to Necromancer and there's like no fire relic for Necromancer, so this is like the best you could use. Anyways, this is what I'm using right now and it's doing its job very nicely and it's a solid relic, it's just a bit expensive or like hard to find because the blueprint is not the easiest to get, but yeah, it's very good. Um, now when it comes to like pants and boots, you can see these are green. Green is always like not that new player friendly. Um, but you don't absolutely have to use these, right? You just need to use anything here that fixes your resistances. So these are mainly here to fix pierce resistance. Fire, aether. Or fire is fine. It's a fire bush. Fire should be fine. Uh, for aether, there's this wit and bleed as well. Oh yeah, so for Vitality, you would need something to fix your Pierce, Vitality, and... Uh, and maybe a little bit of Bleed. But yeah, mostly for like, Vitality and Pierce, right? So you could, for example, use Leg Plates of Valor instead of these. For the Vitality. Uh, for the Pierce Resistance, and then like any... Basically any pair of boots here that give you like vitality resistance to be fine like these are pretty flexible slots but in this case I mean mighty of Uzun's flame fits perfectly here I mean this actually yeah like Uzun's flame gives me like vitality resistance bleeding resistance and also fire burn damage so of Uzun's flame is actually a very very fitting suffix here mighty is like a little bit of physique so this gives me a little bit of HP and DA actually a low a uh, high roll with uh, 7% right, so that's pretty good. And um, like the gravel tools are like... These are... BIS though, like... Because of plus 3 Celestial Presence, I think these are so good. They like, give you even more resistance reduction. But yeah, feel free to use something else if you don't have these. And Imperials of Dancing Shadows, obviously you could get like... Better... Um, pre and suffix here as well. Just, you just need something that has like pierce resistance, right? Also, let's talk about the um, the rune I'm using here. I'm using the rune of the dark progenitor, which may seem a little bit weird because this is a jump, but this has flat reduction to OA and DA on it, and uh, yeah, I'm using this like as an offensive engagement tool most of the time to. Hit this on the enemy and reduce the enemy's OA and DA on top. Feel free to use like the um, the Shadow Strike-ish one that has also flat reduction to enemy OA. It's like a Chaos. I think it's like a Chaos Shadow Strike. Basically doing the same thing, but it has the quality of life improvement that Shadow Strike gives you, minus the reduction to enemy DA. Um, and I can use a offensive. Uh, rune here, like this one or like the Shadow Strike one, because we always have like Virus Might as our escape. So, you engage with this and you disengage with this if you need to. Yeah, that's uh, works pretty nicely. Let's pull up all the buffs here Spectral Binding, Presence of Virtue, Divine Mandate, and then Presence of Might and Presence on Arcane Resonance. These are actually the two. Seeds I'm using here. So I'm using this seed of resonance here to increase my stun re reduction a little bit because whenever um, ascension is down, stun reduction is actually not that great. Like 45% is okay ish. Obviously, with ascension, we have this at 80%. And then also, we're using seed of might because seed of might gives me like what is this? Pierce vitality, bleeding resistance. We've talked about vitality and pierce resistance being a little bit low without these items before, so this is very important. And then also physical resistance, which is great for any kind of caster. And even though this is like a dual wield guy, uh, he's a caster. He's a full fledged caster. And physical resistance is very low on this character. So you might actually want to have like maybe double seal of might or like more physical resistance on your. 
like pants, boots, and probably on the chest though. Like I would probably change this around to a physical, like a caster chest that has physical resistance. So I mean, Fate Weavers comes to mind. Fate Weavers is like the BIS chest for so many casters. And after the change to Blaze Howard, it's probably also gonna be like BIS for this character as well now. It's so good. And obviously that's also also uh, summon our guardians here. So we have one, two, and actually three of them, right? There we go. Are they casting their auras when they do the war cry thing? I guess they are. Um, Alright, let's check dummy here. I think this also should have like a better dummy kill time than the last time I played this character. So yeah, we started our 10 second strats and we killed it at like 33, so like 23 to 22 seconds maybe. Pretty good. And uh, very solid for a like weird conversion build like this, I would say. <clears throat> also this build was able to clear Crucible 150 to 170 on Gladiator in Hardcore before the buff, so it should be better and faster for that now as well. And like I think I did Shadow Realm 52, 51 on this character as well. Um, it could probably go even higher for, on that as well. And softcore for sure, like you could do 70, 70, uh, like 75, 76 on this character and softcore probably pretty consistently now. And also like if you have switched around these three, like the the chest list to Fate Weavers, I guess. Um, like for skills, I'm obviously using like Ravenous Earth, my main ability, which has an awesome. Uh, effect now. Um, then Siphon Souls. Siphon Souls has another effect now as well because of Blaze Heart conversion. This is this orange red as well. Then I'm using this as my engagement tool. And then using Pet Attack to actually make my Guardians focus fire because my Guardians actually deal like quite some damage on this build. Like, you can see the burn ticks here just from Guardians, like 60k, 50. Actually not bad, like they deal some some DPS. And then like the, the tincture here. Must have for hardcore in my opinion, and the same goes for the cluster. And then these are like my a temporary buff ascension and mark of torment, which I can put on like tougher enemies to gain absorption and <clears throat> reflect uh, my damage to them, which doesn't really do that much, but it's more about the absorption here. And then, like, turn of commanding just to see the cooldown of my pot and uh, well, the virus might here. You could switch this around to, like, have move to here, Ravenous Earth here, right? If you are used to doing casting like this, you should probably do this instead. This is probably better. I'm kind of not used to using, um, like, skills with cooldown on my mouse. So, I actually have weapon attack here just to, like, I don't know. Use some additional DPS in between, but it's not really doing that much as you can see. Like, I mean, I have a weapon proof skill actually because of Korvax brand. It's still some additional burn, but as you can see, like the numbers are pretty low. Like, it's 15k, 16k. That's just like damage that goes on top because why not? But most of the time, this character is more like running around and not really attacking that much. Um, there's one thing though that kinda makes you want to be in melee and actually attack the enemy as well because you're in melee anyways a lot of the time because Ravenous Earth because this has like multiple projectiles it's a shotgun, like you can shotgun enemies with this so you kinda want enemies to stand right in the middle here and because of that the w best way to effectively make enemies stand right in the middle here is to well, face tank them and put this under them and if you're face tanking them, you might as well just attack them, right? So yeah. Anyways, let's take this character for a small spin here. Let's go over to the Agnenborg.
Oh yeah, what about augments? Um, so augments, we're using actually Eros Patience here. You can switch around Eros Patience and Ozir's Temper as you feel like, as you like. I'm using some Eros Patience here actually just for HP and armor. Um, on softcore you don't have to use it. And um, even on hardcore you can probably get away with like using maybe one only or like zero actually. Just using them to like have a little bit higher HP pool which... Well, it's pretty handy to have in hardcore. Um, see like away it's like a 3k without ascension, DA 3.1 without ascension. I mean ascension doesn't give you DA but without procs I mean like once I have like wayward soul proc it goes up to like 3.3 almost. Ascension will put me at almost 3.4k away. And uh, if you're using like Ozir's Temper, like more Oz Ozir's Temper augments, you can get even higher OA actually. And also higher DA. <clears throat> at the cost of HP and armor, basically. I mean the armor is... For caster, armor is kinda okay-ish. I mean every caster has like between 2 and 5... Like around between 2k and 2.5k, right? There aren't really that many casters that have more armor than that. Um, but most of the time you don't really need it, right? I mean, you can fast tank enemies to increase your DPS, but you absolutely don't have to, and kiting is fine with this build as well. Like, if you check out my older Crucible videos on this character, they are mostly about, like, throwing down the, the Ravenous Earth and trying to face tank as long as I can. Once I can't, I just run around and DPS will suffer a little bit, but it will still be pretty decent and uh, good enough to clear the Crucible. So, yep, that's... that's. Alright, you got the triple elite here. Or the double elite at least. That's nice to have. Let's go over to the ancient grove as well. Alright, let's enter the grove. So, I'm kinda happy I have my Eros patience. Uh, Augment on Nina right now because we have afflicted, which reduces my HP. So, 14k is still fine, but without the augments, I would probably have like 12k. That would be a little bit monkass, actually. Like, I mean, having bad mutators basically means we have to kite a little bit more on this build. Doesn't mean that you have to log out, just means more kiting. You can like put one or two revenues out here just to make sure you can shop undisturbed. Uh, make sure to buy better shells and frozen hearts. You will need a lot of them. Uh, check these items if you want. Slurfstar is also pretty nice, or like pretty easy on this build, because we don't care about his fumble, our damage is from casting abilities, and those cannot fumble. So. I really think uh, Fate Weavers just should help this build a little bit out. Like, armor is not the greatest anyways, and physical resistance is so bad actually. Like some of these bosses, um, I get like some big spikes from bosses, right? Especially when I have ascension and cooldown. Put the kitty here. And yeah, to prevent those big spikes, you want to have more physical resistance. Alright, Gargabalt, here we go. Oh, 
Honestly, I'm just gonna cut this guy. Like, he hits like a truck in melee and uh. He's super slow, so he's kinda like gonna be hit by my volcanoes anyway. I mean, the Guardians should attack him though. Oh shit, Serenity actually proc what? Oh well, this was not the smoothest of runs. Um, yeah, let's try to make this build a little bit better. Alright, so switch up so some stuff with this character. And uh, managed to get rid of the Justice chest here using the Fate Weavers arrangement instead right now. And also I switched around pants towards a resistant of the Flesh Hulk version of this. And also foot pads of the Grey Magi. <clears throat> now, if you don't have one like this, you cannot switch around the second seal from a seal of resonance to a second seal of might. I was able to do that because like stun resistance is way over like the minimal that you should have without ascension. And um, yeah, the second uh, seal of might is also gonna help me with my physical resistance. So physical res resistance is actually 20% now. And whenever the proc of foot pads of the Grey Magi is up, I got 35% physical resistance. So like 50% of the time I have 35%, 50% of the time I have 30% right, so averaging around 27%, 27.5, and that's basically 20% more physical resistance than what I had before. Like before I had only 7% physical resistance on this guy. Um, we did lose a lot of armor in the process, and a little bit of HP as well. Other than that, it's fine. I also like rearranged my spirit, cunning, and physique to meet like the new requirements. Like you don't need as much cunning anymore for Blazeheart. Um, but we do need a little bit more spirit for the Fate Weavers actually, this one needs 594. Before the highest spirit requirement I had was 572 from the Blight Lord's Hood. Um, but yeah, overall I think this should perform a lot better now actually. And uh, I also switched around my rune to the Shadow Strike one, Rune of Dark Desires now. This one only reduces MEOA, not DA. And for the A reduction, I'm using Crushing Verdict now. This should overall be a DPS increase as well, because this reduces enemy DA by like 236. Also, I switched around uh, some points here, like I took away points from Foul Eruption, right? And uh, put them over here. Also, I can probably still pull some points, like 3 points for Resilience, put like 2 points to Haven here. Um, and also I took out 2 points from Siphon Souls here to get this going. Also I put 1 point into Heart of Wrath because we are a fire burn character, so we do scale those and also we need a new proc or like ability to proc stuff and I'm actually switching over Fisher to Judgment and um, using Twin Fangs now for Ravenous Earth. So like I did the switch from Behemoth to Bat, but this meant that I needed to have like another active ability to proc devotions and f because like twin fangs works super nicely with ravenous earth um i switched over fisher to judgment also i took out eel and got sato's guide instead this gives me like another three percent physical resistance at the cost of some da um how did we fix the da well actually we have very good resistances as you can see like everything is overcapped by at least 30 percent even lightning um, which was like really bad before and because of this i was actually able to okay so the reason why this is so good is because i i'm using double osiris wisdom now here as well osiris wisdom gives you like 15 percent bleed and vitality resistance on top of three percent oa and 50 percent elemental damage which is also fire so, this one is actually insane for the character like this, right? So, 
I mean, I don't really need double of them. I could also like get away with only using one here and then like using maybe another Eras patience for even more HP and armor. Um, yeah, maybe I will do that switch. I don't know yet. But yeah, I mean, the rest is just so strong because of like Fate Weavers and uh, well, the Scrabble Thru's Legards here. And um, so yeah, because of that, even though I'm like advising everyone to never use them on this character because resistances are so insanely good, I'm actually using Dreek's Omen for the A. As you can see here, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times Dreek's Omen and then only 1 for like Lightning Aether spell war to, well, not 3 for the Aether but more for the Lightning resistance. Um, I mean, if you don't have, I mean, these pants, I mean, these, yeah, these pants are just insane, right? I mean, if you don't have these, obviously, you will need to put more resistances on augments instead. And, <clears throat> I mean, in the end, your resistances are gonna be probably just as good, maybe a little bit worse, but not really that much worse. But your DA is gonna be worse, right? Um, but if you take out, like, five, six of them, like, you will lose, like, 200 DA, right? So, we're down to 2.8, which is not ideal, but it's still fine. It's still pretty good. And you could maybe, like, keep 3 and take out 3, and then you're, like, at 2.9k, so, like, losing 100 DA only. But, yeah. That said, I think the builds should be a lot better now. Let's check out a demi kill time here. Start at 1 minute here. So actually we managed to put it down to 18 seconds now, instead of um, 22 or 23 seconds that we had before. So yeah, we have like 4 seconds uh, DPS increase basically against the, the dummy. Um, let's also try this against Lokar now, this is uh, the real important thing. Right? So let's see how this build will fare against Lokar now. So yeah, before going inside the Lockhart dungeon, you should always check your freeze resistance, and if it's like below 80%, you should always pop a Hawfrost ointment. Um, <laughs> kinda got my ass beaten a little bit here, uh, so you wanna make sure to apply that before you go inside, and not like when you're frozen already all the time, and then you have to like disengage. And the freeze and the shotgun of these traps is just insane. Right? Let's also kill this one here over here. Alright. Let's go down to Lokar and see how it goes. Oh yeah, I'm still gonna use the usual safety measures against low cards, so royal jellies. I'm gonna skip the Ognembug ones, the A, O A. And like I would like to have the flame shroud, but actually I don't have it with me. Let's just use this one then at least. For the lightning. So as soon as ascension goes on cooldown, I will pop my mark of torment here. Like, maybe a little bit before that, just to be safe. Then once that is down, I have to run a bit around. Until, like, my ascension is up again, right? Alright, there we go. Uh, 
And there we go, that's the local code. Oh yeah, we got Kuba here. Um, let's see how this build fares against Kuba now. Um, but so far I can just face tank him with Ascension, right? I mean, once Ascension is down, we have to be a little bit more careful, but... Oh, this shit. Um, yeah, this build actually explodes Kuba. Because it's when he like sp splits on top of my Ravenous Earth uh, volcanoes, right? They will just die before they are able to fight back. Also a new blueprint, nice. Okay, let's do another Ancient Grove and see how the build fares now, compared to before. <clears throat> Especially the Bat. Like, the Bat Devotion should give me, like, way better... And more consistent life steal than the giant. So we're losing our max HP here from the buff. Also, we have the Death Stalker right at the start. <clears throat> but what you could notice so far is especially um, the like damage spikes that I had before. Because of my low physical resistance, those are kind of gone, or like the spikes are way lower than before. So the build feels already a little bit safer because of that. Like the hit I took here from the tree, by the way, uh, for example, that was uh, well, that would have been like way higher before. What do we have here? Shattered, Aether Mart, and Vengeful. I mean, that's not anything scary to be honest. Let's buy the better shell. Check these real quick. Alright, so that's our round two. Alright, let's see how we fare against Gargaba this time. Should have not used Ascension here, by the way, for the first stage. Like, uh, we don't need it. I mean, yeah, we also have to keep in mind that the Gargoyle is a fire boss, basically, so... He's pretty fire resistant, and also I have to, like, wait for my Ascension to come up here again. And um, now he's gonna use his Volcanoes again, that's kind of a bad timing here. If 
Fuck that up. Core of Gargaboil. Yeah, this character has some problems against Gargaboil, like in general, uh, probably. Like, it's not the best Gargaboil fighter. But, I mean, other than that... Oh, we got another Fate Weavers. Nice. Other than that, the build is pretty good. Like, I mean, against Kuba Cover, for example, the build was actually insane. And against Lokar, it was fine as well, I would say. And, uh, <clears throat> I would probably test this character... I'll, like, retest this character again in, like, Crucible and Shattered Realm. At another point in the future. So, yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Check out my other build videos if you would like to. Or check out my Twitch whenever I'm alive. And, uh, yeah. Any kind of feedback is appreciated, feel free to comment down below. And uh, check out the other videos on this character, like the older ones. And I'll see you guys next time.